Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we would uh, take a look at this. Now what we have here is a Atari 600 XL. Um, these are fairly rare in the UK. I mean the um, 800 XLs, pretty common. In fact I've got a whole stack of them myself. I've got quite a few of these things. So these are, uh, you find these everywhere. They're not particularly expensive or rare. This however this is its little brother, and I think due to the limitations on these, basically, um, they were basically a cut-down version of the 800, as in um, they don't have as much memory in them, and it's a smaller, neater case. Um, they are a little bit uh, a little bit rarer, I said they didn't sell as well as the uh, bigger Atari, because it was a more limited system. It's akin to like your 16k spectrum instead of your 48k spectrum, if you could afford. In fact, I don't even think these were that much more, that much cheaper, really, than the um, 800. But anyway, um, I've got this. Um, it's one that I bought a while back. I got it at a very, very good price because it's not working. Um, and I will show you basically what it's doing. I've got it connected up. I've got it connected up to my monitor here in a power brick. If I just uh, bring you up onto the screen and we switch on, and I'll show you what it's doing. Now, there we go. Now, it's odd this. I've had plenty of Ataris through my hands that have produced just a plain red screen like that. Um, it's reasonably common. It's usually either the RAM, the CPU, or the ROM that's um, at fault. But I've never actually come across it where I've had these stripes down it like that and it's consistent you know it's not that it changes you can switch it off switch it back on and you get the same with just these two vertical stripes down it so I thought uh, in this video and it's probably going to go into a couple of videos this one um, I thought what we'd start with is we'll um, take this apart get the board out of it and have a look make sure there's nothing absolutely obvious on the board and then we will um, take it from there and it's probably going to be a um, process of substitution we will possibly have a look at the RAM as well because this is only a 16k machine and I would like to perhaps upgrade this to the full 64k which it's capable of which would make it probably the machine that I'm going to keep for my own personal collection I'll never get rid of my original 800 because that's um, that's a nice system and I do want to keep that but as a day-to-day for use Atari um, Atari computer, 8-bit computer, I think this would be absolutely perfect. It doesn't take up much space on my um, desks. Um, I really would like to get this one working and keep this one and perhaps sell off some of my other um, 800 XLs. Anyway, let's uh, let's get down and we'll, uh, we'll get it switched off, disconnected and we will uh, get inside this thing and have a look. I've never actually opened this up. I literally, I bought it probably two years ago. Um, I got a very good price on it. I think I might have paid about £40 for it, which for one of these, in if you look, it's in very nice condition. There's no yellowing on it. There's no chips. There's no damage on it at all. A little bit mucky, that's just from um, sitting on a shelf in my office, because that's basically what I did with it since I bought it. It sat like that on uh, a display shelf in my office. And I thought it's too good for that. Um, we need to get this thing up and running and uh, back into use. So, without further ado, let's get a screwdriver and let's uh, let's get in this thing. I tell you what, it certainly has some. Uh, it feels heavy. I don't know why, but it feels. I'm going to have to weigh these things at some point, because I'm sure it's slightly heavier than an 800. It does feel that way. Right, let's get in here anyway. Let's get a, a pot to put the screws in. That in there. 
something else hold in that. Nope, there we go. We're in. Now nice and careful because we need to disconnect the disconnect the ribbon cable here for the keyboard. We don't want to damage that. Not that we know whether the keyboard actually works in this or not, but let's be careful as it is. We don't want to make it any worse. Now we've got the keyboard. That's nice, it's dated as well. Can you make that out? There we've got a um, date for 1983 on there, made in Taiwan. Put that down. Okay, we're in the computer proper. And let's see how we get this out of the uh, out of the case. I've got a screw there and a screw there. Let's try them first. So I've never been in a uh, in a 600 before now. So I've worked on plenty of 800s, both the uh, original and the uh, XL. And I've worked on a couple of um, 400s, which is basically just a chopped down 800. With a horrible keyboard. But I've never, uh, I've never worked on one of these before. Let's see if that's going to let us get it out of the case. That's free there. Let's take this off. Hmm. You expect the front to come out first. Don't think you have to take these out. I think they hold the screen in together. Is it just a case of a bit of brute force? That's the only thing you don't want to do is try and force anything that's that's stuck. You don't want to risk breaking anything. There's something on this side here that's holding it, and I'm not sure what. That's, that's free there. So what have we got over here that's stopping it coming out? I didn't expect me to be able to lift up. Oh, ah. Oh, that's... That's a sneaky one. I didn't see them down there. I don't think that's a screw in there. That looks like an adjuster. Let's have a go now. That was a hidden screw. Let's put the uh, rest of the case out of the way. Look. And we've now got that screw rattling around inside the shielding. Oh, that's fun. Right, I think uh, we'll stick anti-static strap on so we don't want to do any damage we are on an anti-static map but it's on so it better be safe than sorry right there we go right now first thing is get these uh, nuts and bolts out I think on this and what's um, soldered to the board so I've found you can't really tell with the Atari um, there's a 50-50 chance where everything's going to just be soldered straight to the board or whether most things are going to be in sockets right let's see if we can get in here I need to bend these tags up This side nice and easy to do. There we go. Let's get this shielded off. There we are. Oh, look at that. Now that's what you like to see. Uh, right, let's uh, see if we can retrieve that screw before it causes any damage. Come on, out you come. There we go. 
Now, I've never seen this before. Uh, but let's get the bottom screen off and let's see whether... Right, first things first. We need to look at chip creep. Because I've never, honestly, actually seen it where everything, literally everything, is um, socketed on one of these. Usually, like, the 74 series logic is um, soldered straight to the board, but literally every single IC on this is um, socketed. I wonder if someone's perhaps worked on it in the past. Uh, let's... We, can, we should be able to tell that fairly easily if we take this uh, rear shielding off and we'll have a look at the bottom of the board. Because you can usually tell rework. And amazingly, no. And that could be factory, that there. This is a Rev X9B, whatever uh, that means. But if we look at the board itself, I can't see any flux residue, I can't see any uh, re-soldering. It would be literally on every one of these if they just, someone had just, in the past, decided they wanted to socket everything. So, it does indeed look like um, everything was socketed straight from factory on this, which is most interesting. I've never, uh, I've never come across that on one of the, well, I'm, actually I've never worked on a 600 um, XL before, but on you know, any of the 800s I've worked on. Um, even if like the RAM and perhaps the CPU um, things like that are socketed, that's it. Um, none of the 74 series logics been socketed from standard. Uh, literally, well, there is not an IC on here which isn't in a socket. That's uh, quite cool. Definitely another reason why I quite like to keep this as a um, as my own as my own Atari. At least it'll mean I can use it to test um, some of the um, custom chips. So they should be the same between the 800 and the 600. Right, so first thing we're going to do, let's um, have a nudge round on the board. Well, that was one straight away that was loose. Because what we get is what's called chip creep, where over the years, the ICs slowly work themselves out of the sockets. And these are our, actually, I mean, they're not loose loose but they're a little loose if this fixes it I will be most surprised but literally every one of them ICs was a tiny little bit loose And that's the other thing is here, that's our RAM. And that's what we will need to swap out if we uh, decide to take this up to um, 64K. Uh, these are um, TMS um, 4116s. Um, double four, um, six, sorry, the TMS um, 4416s. We can change them for TMS 4464s. Um, to give us 64k of RAM, that they're basically those are um, 16k by four bits each. So two of them gives you your eight bits, 16k, and you can get exactly the same chip as a um, 64k by four bits each. It's what's used in like the Commodore 64 um, Type Cs, the Wedge Commodore 64s, and various other um, computers. Sinclair Spectrum 128s use um, four of them for their 128k of RAM. So uh, it's common RAM, I've got plenty of that in stock, so um, it should be easy enough to um, upgrade this to um, 64K. I believe you have to connect up a couple of um, address lines which aren't um, connected up at the moment. I will look back into that, exactly what you need to do. But uh, uh, what I think we'll try just now, just quickly, is um, I'm going to connect it back up in this bare state. Now we've pushed all them chips in and see if that's made any difference. I expect it to have made zero difference, but you... Uh, you never know, I have seen it happen before. So let's uh, connect that back up there. Let's connect the power back up, wherever the power's gone. And I've lost the... Ah, there it is. Let's plug that in. Okay, let's give that a try. Like I said, I'm not expecting us to get anything. 
Well, I've got a tiny bit of difference. Um, rather than them funny bars that we have coming down the screen, we've now just got a plain red screen, which, like I said, is more akin to what I'm used to as a fault on these computers. Now, one thing we can try, I know for a fact that um, red screen that's caused by the RAM issue, if you pull the RAM out, um, you should just get a black screen. So let's try that. Where's my proper chip puller? Ah, there you go. The uh, pop the ram out. I think I've got some spares of these anyway. If we just wanted to try it with um, some new ram in it, it was rather tight. One out. two out. Let's see what happens then. If we get a red screen it's obviously not the RAM. If we get a black screen then it could very well be the uh, could be faulty RAM. Uh, nope we still get a red screen and that's with um, if you can see that's both the uh, RAM ICs there you go removed and we're still getting a red screen so I don't think it's a RAM issue. Let's get you back down on the board. I don't realize I brought you off the board and left you on the screen there. So we don't have a RAM issue by the look of it. Let's stick these two back in. I'll do the, we do upgrade this thing to 64K. They will certainly come in handy for my spares box. I think, I think I've got a few of the 16s, but I don't think I've got that many. And they are used in the um, Commodore C16 as well. So a few spares are always handy to have in. gone back in? No, you haven't. Hang on. I've got that one a bit askew when I installed it. Ouch. Nope, no bent legs. Let's try that again. in this time. I'll give it a quick try just to say not expecting anything different. No there isn't. So our um, options are the CPU which is uh, that's 6520 where's the 6502 in this? They give it an Atari part number in one of these, I can't remember. Anyway, that's, um, that'll be for the next video, I think. Um, I think we'll uh, wrap this one up for now. And um, in the next video, I'll get some um, replacement ICs um, out of storage, ones that I know definitely work. In fact, what we'll probably end up doing is um, opening up a known good working um, 800 and use that as a um, sub. And we can basically sub out um the main ICs until we find out where the actual issue is and then we can look at finding one because I'm sure I'll have some spares in um, in stock. So anyway I'm gonna leave it there for now. I uh hope you enjoyed that little uh, look in this Atari six hundred and like I said in the next video hopefully we will um look at actually getting it back up and into a working condition and then um, possibly in a video follow up video we'll look at upgrading this thing to uh sixty four K of memory. So uh, I'm going to leave it there for now. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.